Hey guys, Clark of the Geek here, welcome back to, to a brand new video. Now on my channel, there's a Doctor Who story from Series 11 that I've been very vocal about my distaste for, the Sarangan Conundrum. And I sort of want to do a, a re-review of it, sort of a look back as to why I don't like it. Because as up until now, I've only touched on sort of the bare bones of why I don't like it. I want to go a bit more in depth, if you understand what I mean. So, let's get to it. So the first thing I want to touch on are the characters. All the characters in this, except for the TARDIS crew and the Pating, I can't name with a gun pointed to my head. Alright then, name the characters in the Saranga Conundrum. Jesus Christ! Well, you've got uh, uh, the Doctor, Graham, Rob... No, I mean except for the TARDIS crew. Well, um, you've got the Pating as well. No, tell me the human characters' names. Um, well, you've got, like, um, what's her name? E Sausage Roll, and the, the other one. I can't, I can't remember them. Please don't kill me. Well, to be fair, I can't blame you, so I'm going to let you off. <laughs> I'm going to go now. What? So yeah, none of these characters in the story are memorable in the slightest. They're not really given much of a personality. They're really bland, generic, and when we're made to feel for them, I just don't. And uh, now let's talk about the Pating. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just don't find him... I just don't find the Pating scary at all. I mean, the thing is, they think by going, Ooh, you know how the monster's usually big and scary? Well, now we're just small and cute. They think that's subverting our expectations and being clever. And that's not true. Just doing the complete opposite of what's expected doesn't make it clever. I mean, for one, the CGI is really not good. And he's definitely going to date in the long run. And second, I don't find the Pating scary at all, can't take it seriously. I'm always comparing it to Pikachu or Porg from The Last Jedi. It just doesn't work as the villain of the piece. If it was a separate sort of creature and the main creature was a bit more threatening, you know, I would have accepted it. But I just can't take it seriously when it's waddling about, like eating the metal. It just does not work for me. Another issue I had with the episode was the pregnant man subplot. Not only was it complete filler and added nothing to the overall episode, but it just was executed in not a good way. Now, the reason why I love science fiction, and probably why it's my favourite genre in, like, fiction, is that it takes ideas from our current society and explores them to see how far we could go with this. A really good example of this done right in Doctor Who was the series 10 episode Smile, where the Doctor and Bill land on a human colony in the future, where the service robots communicate through emojis. Although you might think that's a very geek, gimmicky sort of premise, let me explain. Although you might find emojis just a cheap gimmick and not really that good, big corporations don't always think like that. They think that if they're used often, then, you know, They'll take advantage of that and do stuff like this. And that's what I loved about this episode. Another great example of this outside of Doctor Who was in the latest series of Red Dwarf in the episode M Corp, where when new software is downloaded, Lister, played by Craig Charles, can only see products from the company M Corp. See M Corp beer, but I can't see any other kinds of beer. For instance, I can see this, but I can't see. I can't see this. This is clearly a commentary on. When you buy something online and they recommend you to buy other products and it's to show you how far this may go in the future and red dwarf is is known for doing stuff like this when in the in the original series it was known for tackling things like virtual reality games so with the doctor series 10 example and the red dwarf example there's a clear avenue that i can see where the creators wanted to show how this concept can go further but with the saranga conundrum I can't see the direction that Chris Chibnall wanted to show how pregnancy and in biology can go further in the future, making this subplot a complete mess. But hey, if there's anything we got out of this subplot, it was a couple of laughs. My other massive gripe with this story is that it just feels soulless. Now, I'm aware this was the episode that was probably made on the cheap to save the budget, 
because of the blank white corridors with the excuse of it's a hospital setting, making it feel a bit bland, well, very bland, in fact. And with the exception of a few spaceship shots, you just have these blank white corridors all the time. And it's not like Doctor Who can't work on the cheap. Take Boomtown from Series 1 or The Lodger from Series 5. They're budget-saving episodes, and look how well they turned out. Well, in my opinion, at least. So you would think that you would make use of what you have, but Chris Chibnall and the Doctor Who team just don't. It is just a generic, based under siege, typical Doctor Who story with nothing notable added. And that is why I really don't like this episode. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I didn't mean to be very negative, but I just wanted to talk about why I didn't like this story in depth without just saying it's boring. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. What do you think this episode? Leave it in the comments below. And this is Clack of the Geek, signing out. Ta-ra.